Focused on quality and convenience, there isn't much you won't find at Marie's Mini Mart. Homestyle breads, sandwiches, plus a variety of artisan breads and delicious single-serve desserts available exclusively at our Frecker Drive location. Marie's Mini Mart, with 25 locations wherever you go, there we are. Hello, I'm Loidera Cueco, and welcome to the special youth edition of Sharing Our Cultures. In this edition, you'll get an opportunity to meet youth from around the world who will share their cultures with you. The first presentation is by Nicolette and Catherine, and it's about the Philippines. Mabuhay! I'm Nicolette. I'm Kathleen. And we are both from the, the Philippines. Philippines. And today we're just going to do a quick rundown of our Christmas tradition. So our Christmas um, holiday starts at September and it en ends in January. So it's a four month long um, Christmas holiday that we have. And around September to December 25th, um, Houses would start decorating up by hanging up our parol, or also known as a star lantern, like the one we have down here. So um, this one, we got it all the way from the Philippines, and it's made out of a certain type of oyster. And then around that time, children would start to go house to house caroling. Um, it's when we sing Christmas songs, and if they like our um, Christmas, uh, Christmas songs, sometimes we would receive money or candies. And Around those times, too, uh, houses or sometimes even schools and towns would start decorating up by setting up a belen. And sometimes they would even held up a competition to see who gets, um, who decorated the best out of everyone. And the next thing is we um, attend our Simbangabe. So it's 10 nights, 10 night Christmas mass, night masses. It starts at 5 in the morning and ends at six, so it's like an hour long. And we just, they say that if we finish all the 10 nights, we attend all the 10 night masses, we, um, our wishes will be granted. And on Christmas night, Christmas Eve, we have this Noche Buena. Um, that's our Christmas dinner, Christmas Eve dinner. And we usually have like hamon, um, bibingka, putbongbong, queso de bola, which is the round cheese. And on Christmas Eve, like the night, the Christmas Eve, we have this Misa de Galo. It's just the Sunday, like Christmas Eve Mass. And, um, yep. Um, on Christmas morning, we would, as kids, we would sometimes receive the aguinaldo. So aguinaldo is that red envelope right, right there that we would sometimes receive from our godfathers or godmothers. And what they would put inside is just money, just to, as a gift for us on uh, Christmas morning. And um, we also have our media de noche. So that this happens during uh, New Year's Eve. So it consists of 13 fruits or uh, 12 fruits, uh, any round fruits, so like grapes, apples, oranges. It's, um, it's a good luck. Uh, it's just to welcome the new year and it's a sign of, uh, the round fruits are a sign of good luck. And last but not the least is our January feast with the three kings and today, and for this one, we usually just um, celebrate it with our family and have a little dinner. And yeah, that's Thanks. it for our presentation. Thank you very much. You just watched a presentation on the Philippines. Now you're going to meet the creators behind that presentation. Hello, Nicolette. Hi. And welcome. And Kathleen. Hello. Great. It's uh, we're really happy to have you here with us today. Thanks and for having us. a great us. presentation as well. Thank you. Thank Good. You. Now both of you are from the Philippines. Yes. And you're both in grade 12, right? So maybe we'll start with uh, Kathleen and tell me what you'd like to do after you complete your graduation? I would like to be a paramedic. Okay. I feel like that's a really cool like career to take. And I'm always interested in like first aid. 
like doing first aids and going to like those places like accidents mm -hmm. and like doing all those stuff okay. it's supposed to be in the class Right, sort of like helping people out in like yeah. in medical situations. Mm. Okay, all right. You enjoy yeah. doing that. A good, yes. good career to pursue. And Nicolette, how about you? Um, my initial plan was to actually become a pilot because um, I think that being up on the sky and just flying is it feels so cool. <laughs> but then as I grew older and I do some searching and stuff, uh, I became interested in dentistry. So. That's the occupation that I'm looking to get into right now. Mm -hmm. And um, for me, I find it really cool that they could fix a person's teeth and make it look beautiful again. Because mm -hmm. um, personally, as a kid, I used to have my two front teeth right here. They used to be um, broken. Mm -hmm. And then they, got, they, have, they fixed it for me so that I can like, smile with confidence. And I really want to be... I want to do that to other people as well to give them confidence to their smile, right. like fixing yes. their smile. Right. Yeah. And you do have a beautiful smile. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to that dentist for sure. Um, now, when you first came, I know you've been here for about six years now. And mm -hmm. so when you first came to Canada and here in Newfoundland Labrador, what did you find um, was maybe more challenging or something that you maybe looked forward to? Maybe we'll Kathleen? I find the most hard in when I first came here is trying to adjust to everything like the weather, the school, and like like understanding how people talk because mm -hmm. English is my second language and I find it a little bit hard to talk to a lot of people and understanding what they're saying because in Newfoundland it's also like they talk really fast so that's one thing that I find really hard. Mm -hmm. And also the weather. <laughs> mm -hmm. The weather here is very unpredictable. Mm -hmm. And in Philippines, we only have like hot, like wet and like Rain. hot. Rainy season. Mm -hmm. Rainy season. Yeah, in summer. Yeah. In summer. Yeah. yeah. And I find that really hard to under mm -hmm. like adjust to. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay, and how about you? What was what, what did you think about when you were coming here? Um, I w I'm ex I was really excited because it's my first time um, getting on a plane and being in a different country. But one of the challenges that I faced when I was a kid was communication, just like Katin said. Um, interacting with other kids became a challenge because um, th we have different, like we have different language yeah accent. <laughs> there, uh, the language is different and the, the interests mm -hmm. of, of children is different from my interests so I find that a bit challenging mm -hmm. to communicate and yeah the weather too mm -hmm. is diff very different mm -hmm. from coming from a very hot country into a cold mm -hmm. country it was kind of hard I find it hard to adjust at first but then you kind of get used to it mm -hmm. and yeah. It's all good. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> you enjoy the cold and the snow as well? Yes, okay. the, not the cleaning part of the snow, no. <laughs> no, not the no. shoveling. Nobody enjoys that. So yeah. what are some of the extracurricular activities that you participate in? Maybe we can ask Kathleen. And then. Um, in school, I'm in social networking, yearbook, and mental health and awareness. And I'm also in Girl Guides, so we do volunteering and helping our community, like doing food drives, um, collecting all the food from house to house, and we will put it in like the other community like houses to put all like the food that we collected, mm -hmm. and yeah. Okay, so that's sort of given to people who are in need of yes. extra food, all right. And Nicolette, yes. how about you? Um, I used to be a part of our student uh, school student council. I was a member, and so I help plan um, activities for school, like for Spirit Week. And I'm also I was also a part of um, the badminton club, which I really love. But unfortunately, due to COVID, we have to put it to a stop for now. Mm -hmm. And outside school, my activities were um, I was I I was a dancer. I used to dance for uh, Joe Dreddy Dance Co. <laughs> I'm not sure if I'm saying it right. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but 
now that I'm grade nine, kind of have to stop because I need to focus on um, getting into university for now. And um, at home, I just usually like to chill and <laughs> do, do some video gaming once in a while or reading and mm -hmm. sometimes even knitting. I, I'm just, I just, it's a new hobby that I started, which I really love. <laughs> yes. Okay, that's great. Well, thank you so much for being with us here today. We really appreciated your presentation and telling us about yourselves. So thank I want to wish you all the best as you complete your high school and you go further in your career goals. Thank, thank you. Thank you. you. Okay. And Sharing Our Cultures will be right back. Our next presentation is by Juma and Jalal and it's about Syria. Hi guys. My name is Juma. I'm from Syria. Okay. My name is Jalal. I'm from Syria also. And today we're going to talk about Syria. This is the map of Syria. Who's your name? And Syria is located in the Middle East. Uh, it's like in the middle, out of like to the north, Europe, and to the west, Africa, and to the east is Asia and to the south is the Gulf of the Middle East. Yeah. Syria has one of the oldest cities in the world, Damascus. It's 9,000 years old and we have one of the famous uh, and old uh, castles from uh, the uh, old empires that have been in Syria. For example, the Roman Empire and Parma is like located right here. And there's a lot of uh, historical places like as you see here in the picture. They're like 7,000 years old. Most of the stuff now destroyed because of the war, and most of the stuff right now, like historical places and historical stuff are stolen. But some of the stuff are like in good condition, as you see. And uh, Syria has 14 cities. The capital city is Damascus. Here is Damascus. And uh, Syria has 60 castles. And uh, Syria has uh, 20, 21 million people in Syria and uh, has uh, many, many garden. Actually, Syria is uh, very beautiful. Uh, it's not uh, too big, uh, but uh, has, has many things very beautiful, very great. Uh, this is everything about Syria. Thank you for sharing my Producing. Thank you guys. Welcome back to a special youth edition of Sharing Our Cultures. I have with me Jalal and Juma, and they gave their presentation on Syria. But now we want to find out a little bit more about them. So welcome Juma and welcome Jalal. Thank you. Yes, we're happy to have you here with us. Great. Okay, good. Thank you. Now, maybe I'll start with you, Juma. Tell me, um, yes. when did you come to Canada? Uh, one year, six months ago. Okay. I yeah. lived 10 year, uh, years in Syria. Okay. After Syria, from okay. Syria to Lebanon. Okay. I lived in Lebanon six uh, years. After uh, seven years, after that, I, I lived from Lebanon to Canada. Uh -huh. Yes. Okay, now we got your journey right. So yeah. it started in oh, yeah. Syria, then you went to Lebanon, and now yeah. to Canada. Yes. Okay, now, so Jalal, tell me a little bit about you. Um, I'm Jalal. I'm from Syria. And I left Syria when I was five years old. Okay. To, I left to Lebanon too, same. Okay. Uh, I lived in Lebanon for four years. After that, they called us to come here then in 2016. Yeah. Okay. I arrived here in... January 1st oh, right. <laughs> and the New Year's Day <laughs> yeah. New Year. and I'm sure it was not very warm when you arrived no it wasn't oh, first we arrived to Toronto we stayed there for one night I remember on the plane I was sick so it was my first time uh, being, getting on a plane but it wasn't that much fun because I was sleeping the whole time because I was sick yeah because you know yeah. the weather and stuff like that okay. so it was cold so mm -hmm. Pretty much of the time I was sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> okay. yeah. That's how you coped with it, by, by sleeping? Yeah. All yeah. right. Okay, so now, Juma, you are in school 
Can yes. you tell us what school you go to right. and what you're probably planning to do after you finish school? When I finish from my school, mm -hmm. I will go to uh, college because okay. uh, I have work. I, I was working in Lebanon, okay. uh, make it freezers for okay. stores. Okay. Yeah, I will do that after my school. Okay. Yeah. So after you finish school, when you were living in Lebanon, you'd go to this place where you'd make freezers. Yeah, I will okay. work here mm -hmm. after my school. Right. I will go to college first okay. thing. Okay. After that, uh, I will looking for work, okay. for my work. Okay. Right. Yeah. And uh, now Jalawi found out that you did a presentation that has sort of made you famous, or soon to be. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit about that presentation and uh, maybe what has happened since you did that? Um, I did a presentation last year, uh, like same time as this time, like in grade nine. Uh, it was about Anne Frank, the book Anne Frank. Mm -hmm. Then we were, we were supposed to do like a journal uh, about you uh, have to pack like a bag, you live in your country and stuff like that. So I needed help with the presentation. Uh, I went down to Miss uh, Mitchell, she used to be the ACL teacher. I was like, Miss, I need help, I have to wait, write a, a journal and stuff like that. She's like, all right, Jalal, come. And then we sat down and started talking like, then at the end we had a lot of information like because i was speaking she was writing she's like Jill, we have a lot of like uh, information we should do like a presentation rather than write in our journal then we asked miss english teacher and she said yeah sure we, let's do a presentation then i did the presentation about me leaving my home i was like i don't have to imagine me leaving my home i did i don't have to imagine me packing uh, my like packing stuff and leaving. Yeah, so I talked about my journey, leaving my country and coming here to Canada. Okay. Because um, somehow Anne Frank's experience was yeah. very similar to what you had experienced. Uh, so yeah. You, so you told the story from your own Yeah, so experience. I was trying to like send a message, like look around, the person sitting next to you might be Anne Frank. That's what I said right. at the end. <laughs> Right, yeah. so that, that makes a lot of sense. So for you, Juma, when you, uh, you came, what were the things that were a little bit different for you, for school? Uh, and I know English is not your first yeah. language, but... Uh, yes, uh, I got different. Yes. Uh, the English is... Uh, I don't know uh, English a little bit. Okay. So now it's good every day more experience in English. Okay. Yeah, I will be good. Oh, I know. Yeah, I will be yes. <laughs> if you only came here in six yeah. months, you're English. It's a different, uh, different here in Canada. I got yeah. different. The weather okay. is very cold here in St. John's right. and all Canada, I think. Yeah, and the school and school, everybody speaking English. Mm -hmm. This is the uh, first thing hard for me, but I will be good in English. I know you will. With yes, that kind I of confidence. Try. I will try. Yes. I, yeah. <laughs> You've got the determination to do it, and I know you will. Yes. And uh, we're looking forward to that. When maybe next year, this time, we have yes. a conversation, yes. you'll be doing very well in English. So thank you so much, Dilal thank and Duma, for thank being you. here with thank me. You, I appreciate you so that. Much. Yes. Sharing our cultures will be right back. Our next presentation is by Farhat and Farangis, and it's about Afghanistan. Salam. Salam. Hi, Hi, everybody. I'm Farangis Wasif. Uh, I'm from Afghanistan. Hi, I am Farhat. Uh, I'm from Afghanistan. Uh, this is uh, our presentation about New Year celebration. The uh, information about Afghanistan. Afghanistan officially the Islamic Republic of Afghanistan is a uh, long, long located country located at the crossroad of uh, Central and South Asia. Uh, uh, the New Year Afghanistan is, uh, start uh, to 21st March and they, uh, they continue three days uh, and they, in Afghanistan they name uh, Nauru's uh, Afghanistan food in New Year. We always in New Year um, we make seven drive roads. Uh, they name in Afghanistan half Mila. 
We always we make an other uh, rice with vegetable and make salmon egg and uh, Afghanistan clothes uh, for celebration. Uh, all Afghanistan people always they wear special clothes. Uh, they make a colorful with colorful fabric uh, and they wear necklace. Uh, they necklace uh, Afghani rock and New Year uh, they in New Year play uh, kite play egg and they go to park henna henna is one the uh, one the tradition of Afghanistan uh, and they make henna in the henna um, color you know, for Afghans means uh, the happiness color and uh, dance in New Year. At, uh, the, in Afghanistan, dance name is uh, Atan. Uh, they um, uh, uh, they doing this uh, in the uh, in the uh, celebrations and uh, how to celebrate the New Year in Afghanistan. In Afghanistan, people uh, invite friends uh, at home and uh, they uh, invite at. Park. Thank you for listening uh, to uh, our presentation. Thank you for listening to our presentation. Welcome back to a special edition of Sharing Our Cultures. You've watched the presentation on Afghanistan, and now is your time to meet the creators behind that presentation. Welcome. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm good. How I'm about good. you? I'm good too. And what's your name? My name is Farange Swasi. And yours? Uh, my name is Farhat Wasif. All right. And you're both from Afghanistan. Yes. yes. So um, when did you come to Canada? Uh, six months ago. You came six months ago. OK. Uh, me too, six months. Six months. Okay. okay. So and you're here with your family? Yes. yes. Okay, so how many people are in your family? Tell me uh, about them. Um, my dad, my mother, and my uh, two sisters, and, and two brothers. Okay, thank you. Now, we, um, when we were down at the rooms in March, you were celebrating your country's New Year, right? Yeah. What do you call the celebration? What's in Nowruz. We call Nowruz. Can you tell me a little bit about Nowruz for Angus? Yeah. And now we uh, make a uh, 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 special food like uh, 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 seven dry fruit uh, in Afghanistan. Say uh, uh, call that uh, uh, half mewa, and we uh, make the rice with vegetable, and we make uh, samanak, and uh, we wear the special clothes uh, of Afghanistan. Uh, and uh, we uh, uh, make henna in the uh, in the uh, we uh, uh, celebrate with uh, friends uh, invite uh, we invite friends in the, uh, our house and uh, in park and we make uh, samanak and we singing song the samanak okay sounds like a very happy time yeah. and i really love your clothing that you Thank wear you. they're really <laughs> really beautiful and you Thank wear you. them uh, so well now so since you've been here in canada you've been in school right yeah. so who has been, and oh, I know you didn't speak English prior to coming, so you've yes. been in school and you're um, learning English? Yes, I, I help my uh, all teacher, Miss Dooley, Miss uh, Rosel, Miss O'Brien, Miss Emily, they all helping in read, read, uh, writing uh, about uh, sharing culture. Uh, I I uh, of the uh, they are of the him. Uh, I thank you very <laughs> much for yeah. helping. Yes. Well, we should thank you because when I think about it, you've only been here six months and you've only had the opportunity to speak English as often since you've been here, and you've done so well. We really understand, you know, and you were willing to. Uh, come and present on Afghanistan and talk with me about it. Yes, uh, Farangis, what else would you like to say? Uh, I would like to uh, thank you uh, uh, to them uh, on 
because for, for helping uh, me and uh, uh, um, they are learn for me reading, uh, writing and all. Right, mm -hmm. okay, well yes, it's our pleasure to help you with everything you need to make here feel like a home for you and feel a sense of belonging. So what else do you like to do um, when you're not in school? What do you do at home? Uh, I uh, do uh, uh, sometimes volleyball okay. and uh, read books and uh, I'm helping for mom. <laughs> yes, that's, that's great. We really um, appreciate you joining us today and telling us a little bit about yourself and about Afghanistan and your celebrations. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Yeah. Okay. And sharing our cultures, we'll be right back. Thanks so much to Nicolette and Kathleen, to Fahad and Farangis, to Jalal and Juma for being with us today. And thanks to you for joining us. Join us again next time on sharing our cultures. <laughs> <laughs>